Hello and welcome to this video about the third lab of microprocessor architecture on the RIS-16. So for this lab, you will have to download, of course, the PDF file of the lab once you have it. So basically this lab will highlight the limitation of the RIS-16-8 instructions and present you a more advanced version of the processor. Do not spend too much time on the first two improvements about the clock frequency and stuff. This will be introduced in the next lab. What is of interest? are the new instructions that are introduced in this lab. There are now 16 instructions in the new version of this processor, eight more than the previous one. The first instruction set is called IS1. And you can see all of those uh, new instructions there, such as a shift to the left, arithmetical shift, NOR, uh, branch shift lower, branch shift greater, this kind of instructions. Then there is also the special IS1 instruction set, which has a big instruction size, there is also the instruction set IS2. This set has different instructions such as the multiplication. All the new instructions for this lab are described starting from page four. I advise you to read carefully this part of the handout. Another new thing is the overflow system. As we can see here now, for example, the add instruction can use a label. This label is used in order to jump in case of overflow. Be careful with this overflow because the architecture being signed or unsigned has an effect on how the overflow works. You will also use another simulator for this lab that I will introduce at the end of the video. There are three questions for the assignment of this lab. The first question asks you to choose an operator, one of those four operators being greater or lesser or lesser or equal or greater or equal. Determine a set of test vectors. I remind you that the test vectors are a list of numbers that you may want to test in order to assess that your code works in all the corner cases. Justify all the test vectors and think them through carefully. Think of all the corner cases and all the special notations that exist in tools complement representation. Also think of maximum or minimum or positive or negative numbers. Things that you may want to test in order to assess that your code is correctly working. Once you've determined these test vectors, write the code for the operator you choose. For this, you will have to use the original 8 instruction from lab 1 and also the special IS1 17-bit instructions that we introduced earlier. Then for the third question, write a program that will multiply the inside content of register 1 and register 2. This question is exactly the same as the one of, lab, of laboratory 1, except this time you will have to do it with the special IS1 and IS2 instruction set that we introduced earlier. Let's check out the simulator now. If you go to UV, inside of the simulators and then download the ASM simulator. Once the simulator is started, you get to this page. Click on ISM, click on run, then you will see the full user interface. In the part on the top, you can edit your code. In the part on the right is the program memory. Down here, you can see the debug window where you will be able to track what's going on in your processor along the instructions. And on the right, there is the registers and data memory. In the menus of the simulator, you can change the architecture by changing the preset here for special IS1 and special IS2. Note that the online simulator also can change between IS1 and IS2. Now let's take an example. I will now select the architecture IS1. Click on ISM and then run in order to load your code. After that, you can either click here on the run button, which will execute your code completely until the alt, or you can go step by step by clicking on the next button. Now we have this simple code example. I load two registers, add them together. If there is an overflow, I jump to putting one into register five. If there is no overflow, I put zero. Let's test this code. Click on ISM, click on run. Then either click on play here, the run button to run it all the way through, or click next to execute it line by line. I click run. Here you can see that the addition was carried. There was no overflow. So register five is zero. Now if I change the values, I do ISM, then run, play. Now there was an overflow, so register five is now one. Don't hesitate to play along with the simulator. That's it for this video. See you in the next one.